your film? Why has it always got to be a white woman? And I thought, okay, well, that's an extraordinary projection. Onto, it's a charcoal woman. It's a woman that, but in fact, she was very much based on her. And the, all the characters in the, in the melodrama, in that melodrama, were all the actors, the young students I was using. And in the melodrama, the main part, I think all, all the characters are black. So I, it hasn't, even if it had been, if it had been a white husband and a black lover, or a black husband and a white lover, that would no longer, in a film like that, be a, a cause of remark, I don't think. People might note it and think, oh, does it, what is he saying with, with that choice? Whatever choice you make, two white actors, three black actors, two white and one black, there's a way of over-determining and over-interpreting it. And um, that's not really been a question that's if, come back to me. Yeah. If I can follow up then, well, yeah. when you are working on this, are you conscious, I mean, how do you remove that whole layer? Of no, sometimes there's not. So in the performance piece, there's a person singing the Berlioz and there's a person singing a response to it. And therefore, me, it, it was important that one of the singers certainly needed to be South African black singer, because it was very much about Europe coming to Africa. And in the live performance, that, was, that certainly had a very different feel. You would have read it differently with two white soprano singing, and the, 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 the fact that there were two different singers of two different races was definitely part of the, um, the meaning of the piece. And the fact that the music is a mixture of Berlioz, but not Schubert in that case, and Johannesburg choral singing and the musicians do cover that mix. Um, but we are recasting one of the singers, and the new soprano may well be black, in which case there'll be two black women singing. But still, it's not the same. It would be very different to having both people singing the Berlioz being white. So you're right. It's not as if you can pretend that that way of, you know, that you can stop people seeing what they see and us seeing how we see it. When you do an exhibition like you did in Rome a couple of months ago, when you have various installation or animated characters, there is a thread or there is a choice which is always the same or it's what put no, them together? I think the, the different exhibitions have different logic. Sometimes there's an entire thematic exhibition which is curated or chosen quite carefully with different pieces together. Um, very often there is an exhibition with a large thematic center and different satellite pieces which don't have a connection. But it's very rare that one can't find a point of connection between them. So even in the exhibition here, there's the one large piece of uh, I'm not me, the horse is not mine, and some prints that come very d directly out of it. But other pieces that on the one hand were work that was done in the last year, that new work that I wanted to show. But there still are different points of connections and connections. The exhibition in Rome at the Maxi Museum was a mixture of the piece from Documenta and pieces from their collection. And they have different pieces from the collection over the years which they wanted to show and I wanted to be seen together. So it was more of a sense of a kind of a survey. This is the range of things rather than this is all one. And also in the exhibition here, obviously of a smaller scale, is about not just one theme but something of the range of different things. I think it's very often that artists get put into a very tight hole of this is the work they do. This work is always about Johannesburg. This work is always about these questions. And it's, there is a polemic in saying, no, here are things that don't fit into that box. Can I ask one more question? We can have a... Is there else? Yeah, there's a question here? Yes, let's do... Your... It does, the question about text. It does in different ways. It does in the sense of drawing on top of old books, which give you firstly a, not a pure white surface but already a damaged surface to work from. So that's already an exciting thing. And the choice of books is very often determined obviously both by a broad range of what their content is and by the quality of the paper, how well it holds Indian ink, how well it holds charcoal. But there is a sense of a different history. that. Behind every statement made, there are many, many other suppressed, edited, hidden, conflicting statements that arrive at the final statement. 
And very often in my, in my sketchbooks, there are more phrases and th ideas in terms of a sentence or a few words, both as a memory of what the idea is I want to work with, and sometimes that text itself is important, usually as something that's almost like a riddle. So that it is, what could this mean? What could it be? Um, so yes, you're at the, they have a, an important role, and sometimes there are drawings of the word, so it's a word, but it's really a drawing of the word or a drawing of handwriting. Um, but it's not as if I always have a very clear understanding of the specific meaning or use. I can usually construct one if called on, but it's always a construction. Should we have a, a last question? Yes. Ubu. What would you like to know about? Ubu. Oh. I'm trying to think if, no, I'm just trying to think on my computer if I have it where it is. We'll have a look. I haven't yeah, been I looking for it. Okay. Okay. No, 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 that's fine. No, I mean, that. it was an interesting, it was, it's a project um, in the 1880s. Uh, a schoolboy writes the play lampooning his science or history teacher, uh, Alfred Jarry, called Ubu, which is about a tyrant Ubu who is very self-pitying and self-aggrandizing and completely violent. And uh, it's become an absurdist piece of theater performed since that time. And it was the centenary, 1898, the centenary of his, uh, 1896, the centenary of his birth, and the friend said, let's do a project with Ubu. And he had a very specific way, Jari himself had a very specific iconography of Ubu, a fat man with a pointed head and a spiral on his belly. And so he started off as a set of etchings. And after I'd made the etchings, I thought this would really be interesting to animate and do work with a choreographer. So then there was a project to work with a choreographer on Ubu. At the same time, I was working with a puppet company saying, let's do a project about waiting, waiting in South Africa for things to change. And we were going to do that when the Truth and Reconciliation st Commission started in South Africa, which was a commission of inquiry into human rights abuses in the apartheid era in which there were victims giving evidence and perpetrators of violence giving evidence. And perpetrators gave evidence because they were offered amnesty if they told what had happened. So it became about sacrificing justice for truth. And there's an astonishing period of documentary material that came out of South Africa of the terrible things that had been done. And at a certain point, I understood that I'd committed myself to two projects and didn't begin to have enough time to do both. So I simply collided the two together and saw what happened if we put the absurdism of and rough grotesquerie of Ubu together with the documentary material of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to see, is it possible to bring these two very different languages, verbal and visual, together without them overwhelming each other? And what we discovered was that the closer they were together, the more eloquent they became. That the crude animation was given a gravitas by the documentary material, and the rough grotesquerie of the drawings made you suddenly look at archival footage in a less blasé way than we are used to. So having said that, let me see if I can. I'll see quickly if there's anything on the hard drive here that has it. Um, it's not on that one. No, I'm sorry, I don't. No. I'll check in one other place. Ah, here we are. Okay, we'll finish with this. We'll show it seven minutes long. Do you want to see the whole thing? No. All right, we'll end with this, then we'll stop. Okay, uh, it's uh, seven minutes and it's, it's, this is a piece of video that was used, sections of it was used as back projections in the theater piece and there were performers in front of it, but what I have is the piece that existed as a video piece by itself.
A big, big, big thank you. I don't think I'm going to say anything more. Just a little token from us. And just keep coming back. Thank you, I will. <laughs> Thank you all. You just get it. Thank you all for coming. Just, she's forgotten to get it. You just come Yes, yes, I did. I did. It was very nice. It was very easy that way. That's really kind of... nice. Hello. Hi. Good to see you. No, there are two. There's a stone at the ground, and there's one. And the stone at the ground is the only stone at the ground.